Hey, what's up there? I'm Cody, and in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the important Bitcoin metrics to pay attention to, as well as cover the options and liquidation levels for Bitcoin. And then we're going to talk about some really important economic information and some data that will potentially affect the Bitcoin price. But before we get to that, be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit that like button, and be sure to follow me on X. Bitcoin over the last week has actually been fairly strong. We're up about 2%. And the reason for that may surprise you. The fear and greed index right now is at about 42, so not quite fear, uh, but barely on the edge here of neutral. If you take a look at our Bitcoin chart TA, we can see here that Bitcoin's actually at a point of resistance right now at about 27,200. This is a level that we need to see Bitcoin push past in order to change the narrative surrounding the overall bearishness with Bitcoin. But one thing you'll notice over the past couple of weeks is that Bitcoin has actually found a fairly substantial support level here. And I can go ahead and outline the support level right here. A fairly substantial support level that it's it's touched many different times. You could actually pull this down a little bit here and say about 25,400 has been a strong level of support for Bitcoin going all the way back here to March. So we've seen Bitcoin bounce off of this level, and we've seen it push above the resistance about 26,400. Now it's at 27,100. If we zoom in here and take a look at what's been going on in the past couple of days, we can see here that we've seen significant bullish momentum push us higher and higher and higher. And we need to see a breakout here above 28K, and a breakout here above 28K would signal to us that we have kind of a a bullish mo momentum uh, and a reversal of the bearish trend, okay? And I'm actually very um, bullish myself right now in Bitcoin's uh, current prices, okay? So I've talked on this channel many times about not getting too bearish. And when people uh, saw that Bitcoin dumped all the way down here to about 25K, they kind of all piled in, especially on social media, saying that, you know, we're going to... 23 and 21 and 20. And I always warn against getting too bearish, getting too um, oversold. And Bitcoin right now has, has found a, a really nice footing that I think that it can actually start to push a bit higher. And if you're one of those people who are kind of waiting for the next level, the next dump, it, I don't think we're going to wind up getting that because we've already seen some fairly strong momentum over about the last month. And I do think that we're honestly going to be heading much higher here from this point. Now, we had a, a wonderful number of chances here to buy below 26400 and even down here at about twenty five k. And I, I've actually taken the opportunity myself to add several times here in this region. I've made a couple of videos about them. And if you guys are curious on my thoughts and, and how exactly, you know, I like to play things, go check out those videos. And really what it comes down to is, is being a contrarian and being able to and willing to buy when other people are selling or sitting on the sidelines because they think that there's going to be another dump coming. And personally, I think waiting on the sidelines for the price to get even lower is just being greedy. And I like taking advantage of 25K or around 25K and being able to buy that because I still think that that's a fantastic level for me to accumulate Bitcoin. But again, not financial advice. You know, do your own research. But I want to go ahead and put this into perspective. We've talked also a couple times about how September is normally a very rough month for Bitcoin. But you'll notice that in this September, we've actually been green. And as I've said before, if we can actually go get through September, which today we're at the very first day of October, then we usually will have a green October as well. And October is one of the best months for Bitcoin on the record. And I think that this is going to wind up being a very good month for Bitcoin coming up. And we can see here that in, in October, Bitcoin usually has gains of 39% and 27% and 47% and 33% and 60%. So October is just one of those months where Bitcoin tends to fly, especially after you get through the August and September doldrums. But one of the reasons why Bitcoin is up is because we go ahead and take a look at our liquidation level. Uh, we've had significant short liquidations over the past couple of days, 14 million on the 26th, 22 million on the 27th, and about 9 million here on the 28th. So we've had a, a large number of liquidations that have pushed the price higher from about 26,300 all the way up here to where we are at about 27,000. 
In fact, if we take a look at our liquidation heat map, we can see here that we have significant liquidity right now above at about 27,300. And if we can push into that level, we can actually get a significant number of short liquidations and that will cause another cascade to push it even higher. Now, the largest number of, uh, of, of liquidity that we've seen here is at about this 27,400 level, okay? So if Bitcoin pushes anywhere near that 27,400, 27,500, you're gonna see some really big liquidations start happening at about that level. Now, on the other side, uh, there, there really doesn't seem to be as large of, of liquidity on the downside, except when you get down here to about 26,600. Okay, so if you do drop below 26,6, we're going to wind up seeing significant liquidations on the long side, and it could push the price lower. But I do think that the risk right now is mostly to the upside. And it's very possible that is if we can get some a little bit of moment, a little bit of momentum and a little bit of, 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 of bullishness in the market, and we have that sentiment kind of reverses, then we could really see Bitcoin fly and push through this, this, short, this short liquidity here and push even higher. But I also want to go ahead and review what happened in the options market. So normally when I talk about Bitcoin options, we talk about the one month of the, uh, the one day of the month in which uh, there's a, a large number of, of long and short options uh, contracts set to expire. And so previously I'd put out this, that uh, the max pain price for the 29th of September, a couple of days ago, was about 26,500. So we wound up seeing that play out in the price over the last uh, couple of days, and especially on, on the 29th, we saw some, uh, the 28th and the 29th, we saw significant uh, volatility those days, right, as those Bitcoin options expired, and it actually led to a, a large increase in the Bitcoin price, and we pushed right past that 26500 level. People got liquidated on options, and we saw a significant movement in the price. Now, we've moved on to October, right? So October, what we're looking at here is about $1 billion worth of call options expiring on the 27th, and about uh, 462 uh, $462 million worth of, uh, of puts expiring on the 27th as well. So a billion dollars worth of, uh, worth of calls and about $462 million worth of puts. Okay, so that's what we're looking at right now. And if we go jump to that day, which is the 27th of August, by the way, this is this is or the 27th of October. This is Dairy Bit Exchange. We can see that max paying price is 27K. So according to this, According to Max Payne theory, we'll probably stick or they'll try to move us uh, the, the uh, options uh, contract of buyers and sellers are going to wind up trying to push the price here close to 27K in order to cause the maximum pain. So we have um, uh, the options towards the end of the month looking at about 27K. Next, I want to go ahead and talk about the miners reserve. So the miners reserve over the past month, the number of Bitcoin in individual miners wallets has actually gone up over the last month. And we've seen here that it started from about um, 1.8 million, uh, 39, uh, 1.8 million, 39,000, almost uh, 1.8 million um, at about 40,000 or so. But now we're at about... Uh, one one million eight hundred forty one thousand seven hundred forty four. So we've seen over the past a couple about a past couple of weeks, the whole month here, we've seen a climb in the number of Bitcoin in miners' wallets. Miners right now are not selling; they're waiting on the sidelines for Bitcoin to push above where we were previously, so that way they can wind up selling in a profit. And I think this is also one of the reasons why we've seen the Bitcoin price stabilize and move higher is that because we don't have that mining that miner sell pressure that we've had in the past. If we zoom out here to the one year, we can see that miners, uh, they wound up offloading coins at a significant uh, pace until about the 26th or so of May in 2023. And then when the price shot up, now they decided to just hold on to what they have in order to uh, sell at a higher price later. You can see here this kind of correlated directly with the price. Uh, we had a, another price spike, and then we have a little bit of a dip here in the number of miners' uh, coins. And then we've seen over the past couple of months that the miners haven't really sold that much. So that's actually a pretty, pretty welcoming sign and uh, the, one of the reasons why Bitcoin ha has been uh, very stable over the past couple of weeks. 
Now, I want to go ahead and get into some important uh, economic information, okay? So starting with our dollar index, we've, we've talked about the dollar index quite a few times on this channel, but the simple fact is that a strong dollar is a weak Bitcoin, okay? And so the dollar index has been pushing relentlessly since July of 2023. We've actually started to see it pull back a little bit. It's shown a little bit of weakness. Now, we definitely need to see it actually come down here and break through this support level at about 105. We haven't seen that just yet, but uh, if it does, it'll show weakness. Hopefully we can see a kind of topping pattern play out. I think that we're going to wind up seeing the dollar weaken next year, especially as the Fed decides to pause or cut rates. We're going to wind up seeing the dollar weaken along with treasuries. So it's definitely very possible that that provides a boost to Bitcoin in uh, 2024. Now, we also had uh, interesting information over the last 24 hours, and that is that a last second deal has been made to avert the government shutdown. However, this only pushes out to about 45 days, so they're just kicking the can down the road. But that being said, we should see a little bit of a pop on this news because that's positive development. That's positive for the markets. And we should see some, some of this good news flow down into the price. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the PCE index. Okay, so the PCE index uh, that came out uh, back on Friday, and it actually came in uh, lower than expected. Now, this is the Fed's preferred inflation indicator. Okay, and the simple fact here is that it went up less than expected. And this is a good sign for people who want to see a less aggressive Fed, because it shows that inflation is coming down. And in fact, if we take a look at our CME FedWatch tool on the, the probabilities for the uh, the next Fed meeting in November, we can see here that it's at about 81% probability that they just stay at their current rate. So I've been on this channel many times uh, over the past couple of months saying that I think they're done. Okay, I think the last hike they made was the last hike. Okay, they might hold it for longer, but a pause right now is bullish. I think for Bitcoin, it's bullish for uh, any risk equities. It's bullish for tech stocks. It's bullish for a lot of things. But I do think the Fed is done raising rates, quite frankly, because uh, even though we have a lot of Fed heads that go on talk shows and they talk about the fact that they need to see, you know, rates in, in excess of seven percent or so. The market's not buying it, and I'm not buying it either because inflation's coming down, and uh, and and the Fed right now is just trying to talk tough. Honestly, that's what it comes down to. In fact, I think that it's very possible that we wind up getting rate cuts next year. Uh, when though is is going to be a subject that I'll I'll talk about in a future video. Now, as for the uh, major reports coming out next week. We have uh, some manufacturing indexes on Monday reporting. We have factory orders and ADP employment on Wednesday. There's jobless claims on Thursday as well. And there's the unemployment report on Friday. Those are going to be the, the big ones that I'm looking out for. And hopefully we're going to wind up seeing uh, the continuation of a strong economy because a strong economy means that people have money to spend. And if people have money to spend, they have money to invest. And if people have money to invest, they can go and buy things like Bitcoin and uh, or or whatever whatever currencies you like, whatever coins you like. But the simple fact is a recession does not help Bitcoin at all. The recession does not help Ethereum or or Solana or Cardano. None of that stuff helps. Uh, so we want to we want to avoid a recession as, as much as possible. All right. So let me know what you guys think about this information. And uh, if you guys are going to be watching things like, you know, the Bitcoin options expiry at, towards the end of the month, I think that's going to be pretty important. And uh, if you think we're going to wind up getting a, a little bit of a bump off of that news that we got a, a, um, a shutdown averted, I think that's very possible. But uh, I will go ahead and catch you guys in the next video.